now we are going to uh, have a look at the origin of the drama. A drama is a specific mode of fiction represented a performance. This is the definition of the drama. The term comes from a Greek word meaning action. This is the classical Greek drama, which is derived from the verb meaning to do or to act. So the origin of the, the word the drama is taken from the word um, uh, action, which is uh, mentioned in the classically Greek drama. The enactment of drama in theater is performed by actors on a stage before an audience. And we have collaborative modes of production and collective form of reception. The structure of dramatic text, unlike other forms of literature, is directly influenced by this collaborative production and collective reception. Now, we have an example of the early uh, tragedy, the early modern tragedy, Hamlet, which was written by Shakespeare in 1601, uh, and the classical Athenian tragedy, Oedipus the King. Okay, this classical uh, tragic play, Oedipus the King, was written in 429 before uh, uh, BC by Sophocles. These two plays are among the masterpieces of the art of the drama. A modern example is Long Day's Journey into Night by Eugene uh, Oni. This is with regard to uh, um, just an introduction to the idea of the origin of the drama. Now, when we study drama, we have two masks associated with the drama, represent the tragi traditional genre division between comedy and the tragedy. There is always a picture of two faces, one a smiling face and the other is a sad face. The uh, laughing face or the face that is smiling represents a okay, comedy and the sad face represents a tragedy. They are symbols of the ancient Greek muses, Thalia and Men Homen. Thalia was the muse of comedy, the laughing face while Mel Pomen was the muse of tragedy, the weeping face. Considered as a genre of poetry in general, the dramatic mood has been contrasted with the epic and lyrical moods ever since Aristotle poetics, the earliest work of a dramatic theory. As we said earlier that Aristotle was the earliest, one of the earliest, the, the first one who wrote about dramatic theory. The use of a drama in narrow sense um, is used to designate a specific type of a play dated from the 19th century. A drama in this sense refers to a play that is neither a comedy nor tragedy. For example, let us have um, Zola's uh, Thiras's Rakhine or Chikov's, Chikov's uh, Ivanov. It's a narrow, in this narrow sense, that the film and television industry and television drama, um, we have uh, also the film studies adapted to describe a drama as a genre within their respective media. Also, in addition to television drama, we have radio drama, which has been used in both senses, originally transmitted in a live performance. It has also been used to describe the more high brow and serious aim of the dramatic output of radio. So, drama is often combined with the music and dance. The drama in opera is generally sung throughout musical, generally include both spoken dialogue and songs. Some forms of drama have incidental music or a musical accompaniment underscoring the dialogue. Sometimes while the actors are speaking, in the background music is played. Um, also, we have the melodrama, uh, for example, the Japanese melodrama, uh, or the no, uh, for example, and example, the no place. And of course, no place is one of the great Japanese uh, dramatic forms. Uh, even uh, W.B. Yeats, the Irish, the Anglo Irish uh, poet, uh, wrote about uh, this form of Japanese melodrama. In certain periods of history, the ancient Roman and modern, here in particular, we are starting from the history of the ancient Roman and modern Romanic, Romantic, 
some dramas have been written to be uh, read rather than performed. And improvisation, the drama does not pre-exist the moment of performance, uh, performance advice, uh, and we have uh, some plays are uh, written to be read. As I told you, performance device, a dramatic script, spontaneously before an audience. Let's start with the classical Greek drama. This is the earliest um, dramatic uh, form. Um, and let us explain what are the forms uh, that were written in this uh, period of time. Western drama originates in classical Greek, Greece, okay? So we, the, the, the whole um, dramatic record goes back to Greece. And here we have a theatrical culture of the city of Athens, produced three genres of drama. At the classical Greek drama, we have three ma major types. They are tragedy and comedy and satire play. Three types, tragedy, comedy, and satire. Their origins remain obscure, though by the fifth century BC were institutionalized in competitions held as part of festivities, celebration, the God of the Lenses. We have many festivals in the ancient Greek uh, society. And uh, one of these uh, celebration is the celebrating of the god Dionysus. Historians know the names uh, of many ancient Greek dramatists, uh, not least Pythesis, who is credited with the innovation of an actor, Hippocrates, who speaks rather than sings. And in Personates a character. This is the earliest dramatic form. We have an actor who uh, speaks, um, not act, okay? At the beginning, we have um, the, the major character, the actor, he speaks, uh, sometimes uh, sings, uh, and impersonates a character while interacting with the chorus and its leaders. We have a major character and we have a chorus. This, this character um, speaks and uh, rather than sings uh, and impersonate a character and sometimes he interact with the chorus. Um, and uh, uh, the chorus here uh, were uh, uh, a traditional part, was a traditional part of the performance of non-dramatic poetry, okay? Only a small fraction of the work of five dramatists uh, has survived to this day. We have a small number of complete texts by tragedies of Aeschylus, Sophocles, and Euripides. These are three um, tragedies, uh, tragedies um, uh, who wrote tragedy, tragic plays. These tragedians or tragic writers um, were famous in the classical period. And then we have uh, other comic writers. Uh, like Aristophanes and uh, from the late fourth century Minader, uh, Aeschylus historical tragedy, the uh, Persians is the oldest surviving drama. This is the oldest surviving drama which is written by uh, Aeschylus. Okay, so the uh, five dramatists um, uh, that uh, survived to our day, th their work survived to our day, uh, are five dramatists uh, in the tragedy we have three writers, and in comedy, we have two writers. Um, the uh, earliest tragic text is the uh, text uh, called The Persians, which is written by Aeschylus. This is the oldest surviving drama. Although when it um, won first uh, prize of the city of Dionysia competition in 472, he had been writing a plays for more than 25 years. The competitions or uh, the competition which is called Agon, okay, for tragedies. There was a competition in ancient Greek, uh, it's called Agon for tragedies, may have begun early as uh, the date uh, 500 
34 BC. The official records uh, begin from 502 BC, uh, when the satire play was introduced. It does start with a tragic uh, ancient Greek writers. Tragic dramatists were required to present a tetralogy of plays, uh, though the individual works were not necessarily connected by story or theme. Okay. These plays usually consisted of three tragedies and one satire play, though exceptions were made, of course. Uh, for example, with uh, Euripides uh, Alexis uh, in uh, 438 uh, PC. Comedy was officially recognized with a prize in the competition from 487 to uh, 486 which is a later stage. So the first competition was uh, regarding uh, tragedies. It was Aden. It was um, at uh, 553 BC. The competition regarding uh, the tragic plays was 487 uh, to 486 BC. In other words, what does this tell us about the uh, classic uh, age or the Greek age? that they care for uh, drama and they um, uh, love it. And this can be reflected in the competitions that were popular at their time. They give prizes for the best uh, comic uh, and the tragic play. Five comic dramatists competed at the city uh, Dionysia, each offering a single comedy. Ancient Greek comedy is traditionally divided between old comedy and middle comedy and the new comedy. When we come to the ancient Greek comedy, we will find a three division. The first one is old comedy, which was at the fifth century. And we have another type, it is called middle comedy. It was in the first century. And then we have the new comedy late fourth century uh, to the second century BC. Okay, so this with regard to Greek drama. Now we'll move to a uh, classical Roman drama. Uh, following the expansion of the Roman Republic into several Greek territories between 700 to 170 to 140 BC, Rome encountered the Greek drama. From the later years after the defeat uh, uh, of the Greek, we have uh, another um, stage in a drama which was dominated by the Roman uh, culture or the Roman Empire. Uh, theater spread west across uh, Europe uh, and around the Mediterranean and reached England. Roman theater was more varied, extensive, and sophisticated than. Uh, of the uh, uh, culture before it, which is the Greek culture. While the Greek drama continued to be performed through the Roman period, uh, the year 240 BC marks the beginning of the regular Roman drama. So uh, Greek drama doesn't stop, it continues. But the year 240 marks the beginning of the regular Roman drama. However, interest in full length drama declined in favor of a broader, broader variety of theatrical entertainments. The first important works of Roman theater were tragedies and comedies, okay? That Levas uh, Adronisas wrote from 200 um, PC. Five years later, uh, Gannis Naius also began to write a drama. No plays from uh, either writer has survived. Uh, unfortunately, we uh, haven't uh, um, got the ability to reach this text. While both dramatists composed both genres, uh, Andronisas was most appreciated for his tragedies and Navisas was appreciated for his comedies. So Navisas for comedies and Andronisas for the tragedies, okay?
This is with regard to uh, the Roman drama. Uh, by the beginning of the second century BC, drama was firmly established in Rome and uh, uh, a guild of writers uh, had been formed. The Roman comedies have survived are all fabula pa juta, comedies based on a Greek subject and come from two dramatists, Titus, Machias, Flatus, and uh, Paplis uh, Tyrannius after Terence. So Terence is one of the great Roman dramatists. In reworking the Greek originals, the Roman comic dramatist abolished the role of the chorus. This is very important. So the role of the chorus during the Roman period was abolished by dividing drama in two episodes, episodes and introduce a musical accompaniment into its dialogue. Okay, so you have to know that the chorus was in the Greek drama, but the Roman abolished the role of the chorus. Uh, the action of all scenes is set in the exterior location of a street and its complication often follow uh, from ever is dropping. Plato's the more popular of the two wrote between 205 uh, and uh, 80, 184 BC and the 20 of his comedies survived. So this writer, uh, that this writer's work survived to us and we have uh, 20 of his plays survived. From time of the empire, the work of two trage uh, tragedians survived. Now we discussed the comedies, we'll move now to the tragic plays. We have uh, the work of two tragic writers. One is uh, an unknown author, while the other is the Stoic philosopher Seneca. Seneca is famous for his uh, tragic play. He is the greatest uh, Roman uh, tragic writer. Nine of Seneca's tragedies survived, all of which are fabula uh, creepy data. Tragedies adapted from Greek originals. His Federa, for example, was based on your piece Hippolytus. Historians do not know who wrote the only extant example of the fabula Bartixta. Tragedies based on Roman subject. So, the term fabula per texta means the tragedies based on Roman subjects, okay? While the uh, expressions cribi data means a tragedies adapted from a Greek origin. By this, I have to stop and next time we'll um, uh, trace the development of a drama in the medieval age.